the foundation or the foundational revelation that necessitates this whole subject of prayer is embedded in something God put within man. I want you to listen. Please listen carefully. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 gives us the first biblical account of man's creation as we know. And God said, verse 26, let us make man in our image. That is a very important word. Our image. And after our likeness, let us make man. The first reason, the foundational reason why men must pray is in the very design of man. How God made man to function. So the Bible says God made man in his image. The image of God is a spiritual quality. Are we together now? And then to function means the way men function. Two hands, two feet, to speak, to hear, and all of that. Now, God gave man a very unique gift at the point of creation. That gift is called the wheel. Everybody say the wheel. One more time, say the wheel. As simple as this sounds, it is a very, very, very important subject that God gave man in creating man. He gave man a unique ability called the wheel. The power to make decisions, the power to make choices. And from the moment God gave man that unique gift, that unique ability, God designed that ability in man such that as far as he's alive, nothing should sustain the power to take away the will of man. The only thing that can take the power of man's will is death. So the moment a man dies, he no longer has the ability, as much as the Bible reveals, to make any choice, any decision at all upon the earth. But for as long as a man is alive, he is able to use that gift of the will to make choices. But there are implications to giving that gift. That gift meant that God would never assume anything about man again. From the time man received the gift of the will, man had a mandate to always verbalize his intentions, verbalize his needs, communicate his desires. It seemed as if it became illegal for God to superimpose into man's space, bringing anything at all without that man making demands of it. Are we together now? I hope you know that with gifts come responsibility. If I give you a car, while I'm congratulating you for receiving the car keys, it comes with responsibilities. You need to know how to maintain the car, to fuel the car. The next time you call me to give you a lift, I'm going to ask you, how about the car I gave you? So God gave man a unique gift, but with that gift came a very serious responsibility. This is the foundation for prayer. If you do not understand this, your prayer life will be acting, you will be tired, you will be weary, you will backslide and repent, backslide and repent until you backslide with no need for repentance again. This is a lot of many believers and the reason is because they do not even understand the foundational revelation upon which prayer is built. So back to my story, God gave man a will and from the moment God gave man a will, can you imagine that God in his might, his wisdom would have to allow man to use that will. That God designed his work with man from the time he gave man a will to be a response system. That means man would have to use that gift of will to communicate his desire, to communicate the need for help. Are we together now? And that God would not assume even though God left something in his dealings with man called his mercy. And there is a reason why he left it there. Because there are times man would have the need, but because of ignorance or oppression, he would not know how to call upon God. At that point, mercy becomes another door that God can still follow and help man. If God did not add mercy, all men may die maybe within a week. Because you will be learning that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to. And so there are many times we have received help in our lives that were not directly credited to our asking. We did not know, even know that we needed it. God left his mercy. Are we together? He wrapped up his relationship with man such that even though he gave us a will, 
he still put his mercy as the platform for his relating with man. If you're following, say amen. amen. So why pray? Matthew 7 and verse 7. Jesus is teaching now. Matthew 7 and verse 7. Why pray? Because God gave man a will and he desires that man uses that will, the ability to choose, the ability to make petitions. Jesus says it this way. Ask and it shall be given to you. Understand that this is Jesus' teaching. Ask, he says, and it shall be given to you. We are safe to reverse it. Refuse to ask, and even though it is available, it will not be given to you. Then he says, seek, and ye shall find. Knock, he says, and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 8, for everyone that asketh, receive it. Who receives? The one who asks, not the one who wants. Many believers want many things from God. Many believers desire many things from life. But the Bible says the receiver, receiving is a reward for asking. Everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, the Bible says, it shall be opened. Why do we pray? The Bible mandates that receiving only responds to asking. Matthew Mark 11 and verse 24. Mark 11, 24. Jesus again is teaching. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, not if ye pray, not you are advised to pray, when ye pray, it says believe that ye receive them. Are you seeing now? So we now connect asking to prayer and receiving. Is it making sense now? Remember, it is only those who ask that receive. And now Jesus is introducing something between asking and prayer. That the way we ask is in prayer so that we receive. So we can connect this with Matthew 7, 7. That everyone that asketh in prayer is the one who receives. 